Let me start this over. Okay, hello, this is Garlic or Mark Suter, and I'm going to be giving you a run through of Doctopus and how to use it. I'll try to keep this fairly uh, fast paced for those of you who just want to get to the meat of the information. Uh, real quickly, here's the plan. Uh, why we're using Doctopus, um, things you should probably have done ahead of time, getting your roster together of students, um, and installing and actually using Doctopus, and then a couple of follow-up things. So first of all, why Doctopus? It's so you can go paperless, get rid of those handouts, and you can also watch and track editing behavior um, and see who is actually editing what and when. I'm going to share my screen here, so you should probably be able to see that now. Um, and you can eliminate the, uh, the old method of make a copy, change the sharing, and repeat that process, which gets old quickly. Um, uh, things to have done ahead of time, I'll show you. I have a Google Doc to distribute. I actually have three. I've differentiated three different ones, um, red, green, and blue, red being the highest. The only difference is the red has this extra reflection. Uh, the G or green is the same as this without this reflection, and then the blue is minus a few of these bottom sections. So that's the only difference between the three, just to show that you can differentiate with Doctopus. Um, next thing is going to be actually gathering our student data. So I made this test class folder. I recommend putting your assignments inside of folders so they don't get all mushed together when you have a lot of assignments. It gets uh, full in a hurry. So I would recommend actually gathering your students' Gmail addresses through a form. If you already have your Gmail addresses, you can skip this entire form creation part and skip right to the uh, using Doctopus, which will be about three minutes from now. Uh, student Gmails for Doctopus. Uh, and I'm going to say first name is the first one. It will be a text type. Um, I'm going to show you one interesting one, obviously, right now. I'm going to add another one. Right now there's not a whole lot interesting other than first name, last name. Uh, these should be required, so they cannot forget that. I'll leave without editing that. Um, this last one is kind of important, though. Your Gmail address must... If you don't have Gmail, get one for this class. Now, it is going to be text, however, the data validation, I would recommend turning this on and setting it to be text and set it to email address. That way, um, you typed your email wrong, look again. That way, if they don't use the something at something dot something format, they forgot the at or the dot in those three sets of text, uh, it will notice that and make sure they get it right. That eliminates some errors up front. Um, I don't want that in that order. There we go. First name, last name, Gmail address. You could add one more item of text if you've already uh, grouped your students um, and, you, and they know what the group is. They can choose that from, say, a drop-down menu. Um, uh, you, you could get away with just doing this, though. Uh, that will be just fine. Now, I'm going to actually fill out this form. I'm going to play both sides right now. So, first name, uh, Bob Smith, bobsmith at gmail.com. Somewhere out there, there's a Bob Smith that is really upset. It's a lot of email from me. Submit. And thank you. And, of course, I, you would have to distribute this uh, form to your students either through a tweet or through your website or just a link on your local network drive, however you want to do that. Jenny Jones, Jenny Jones at, oops, at gmail.com. Oops, I forgot the dot, and there it detected it. Oh, so if I forget this, still gives me an error. But if I type it in correctly, looks good. And I'm pretty sure, if I'm not mistaken, okay, that is correct. If I add a space after it, it must eliminate the space for me. I'll show you a thing later where it will make an error, but that looks good. And submit. So now I have two students, and I actually want to do one more, which is going to be somewhat of a legit one. Oops. One more student, and this will be 
Frank Beans, and he's going to be pgtech02 at gmail.com, which I actually have open in Firefox over here, which is a great way to check um, to see what the student sees is use a different browser and sign into a different Google account and add them as a student. Um, pgtech02, very good. All right, so that looks great. I have my form. Let me go back to my um, my drive. I probably have the responses. There we go. I'm going to drag that into my test class. That way I have not only in my test class the form itself, so I could go edit the form, ta-da, or I could go look at the responses, which I have not titled this yet, which is unfortunate. Let's go name this. I should have done that earlier. Um, test assignment. Sure. Lovely. Of course, I need to name this now. Should have done this ahead of time there, Mark. I'm going to leave the responses part on there. Test assignment. Okay, so you can see what I have populated here. You can create this from scratch. If you do, I recommend at least using the first name, last name, and something having to do with their Gmail or yeah, their Gmail address. You do not have to have uh, Google Apps for Education to be able to do this. You could do this with just you know using students' email addresses. You got to be careful with privacy and um, you know emailing students and such. You may want to notify their parents about that before you start emailing their personal accounts. Um, <clears throat> but now to actually get into Doctopus, we're going to go under Tools, Script Gallery, and you want to always do this from the spreadsheet where you have all the students' names and the students' email addresses, not from the thing you want to actually um, share to them. So you have a document that has essentially like a grade book looking thing. That's this. So script gallery, it's currently in the featured section. Um, who knows when you'll watch this, so I'm just going to assume that you'll be in the public and you're going to look for doc, Doctopus search. Should come up with at least one result. Okay, the North Korea has one. I'm going to avoid Kim Jong-il and like a villain. And I'm just going to go with the regular Doctopus. Currently it's version 4.3.1. It's going to say you need to authorize this. Okay. And one thing to note here, um, it's going to later on send email as me. So I'm garlic suitor at Gmail right now. It's going to send email as me, and I'll show you that in a little bit. So we accept that and hit close on this. Now, nothing has really happened except we have a new drop-down menu. So far, it's pretty boring. We can't do anything until we actually launch it now. So the first thing was sort of like installing the software on your computer, and then the next thing you have to actually open the software. So now we're actually going to launch Doctopus. And there's four uh, major steps. The first one is um, going to be how do I want to arrange the sharing. Um, you could do this by groups. Um, and just to show you how you might do that real quick, you can manually add in group right here. And then you could say you are the red group, and you are the red group, and you are the green group. And so when you go into set up sharing and basics. By the way, you'll notice I now have a number one there. Every time you complete a step, it adds it to your drop-down menu. Um, so I could say I want to do project groups and everything else changed according to the choice that I made here. Whole class access level means do, do all 30 of my students have access to each other's documents? I would say no unless you're going to do peer review, in which case you would say comment only. Um, and group member access level, this is when I send it to the, you know, everybody in the red group can edit is what this is saying. Um, if you have a co-teacher you want to share as an editor, um, you can put their emails in there separated by commas. A uh, sheet that contains my uh, responses, which is of course this one. Column that has the email address, that would be the one that says your Gmail address. It populated this drop down from my headers up here. So if you made your own, it will still work. It will just populate that with those. So. Um, column containing project groupers. Okay. And let's go with project groups for now. And I'm not going to have individual folders, but you could help your students stay organized by having them create a folder and throw it in there. I haven't used that feature, so I can't say anything more about it. Now, this is asking, okay, what do you want to share? Where is the thing you want to share? In my case, it's inside of my test class. lovely animation. And now it's <clears throat> now it's asking you 
okay, I see these different groups. The green group should get what file? Well, I showed you in that folder I have these various things. So the green group gets the green template. And the red group gets the red template, of course. We'll say save settings. We've moved on to step three, destination folder. Now this is where do you, the teacher, want uh, the, the, the student files, all the copies of the student files. So I'm going to create uh, for testing. <clears throat> and so this is going to contain all 30, let's say I have 30 students, all 30 of my students' copies will be here. That's what it's asking. Now this is asking what your copies and the students' copies should be named. And these are the variables that you could insert in there. So if I wanted to say, okay, your file is going to be named, your first name, last name, then group. So it would be like Jenny Jones and I think red it was. So I would say first, I don't need this. Anything that starts with a dollar sign is going to be a variable. So I want it to say first name. I copy these so I don't mess it up like they said in the tutorial when I originally learned how to do this. And then groups. It'll say Jenny Jones red or Frank Bean green. Um, oh, it's good enough. Uh, I would notify the document editors. Now it's saying, okay, where is the Gmail address? Get to work on this doc. Hey guys, it's due Friday. So what are, uh, everything looks good. Why is that lit up? What did I miss? Oh, select a folder. No, I gave it this. All right, fine. If I choose a folder, does it like it? Evidently, I like that better. I don't know why. Oh, I forgot to hit the create folder name. Excuse me. I forgot a button there. There we go. So you can create when I forgot to click the button there. So we'll save settings. Now we're on the last step, which is just verify it before you run it. So what am I going to be running? Uh, we're going to do groups. Whole classes not have access to each other's. Everybody in the group can edit. Um, green is getting that one, red's getting that one, and a sample notification email will look like this. To this person, get to work, here's a comment. All right, it uh, looks pretty good. Scroll down, say run, copy, and share. Thanks for patience. You'll notice in the background all these columns are starting to pop up. We'll get to that. Don't worry. While that's running, I'll show you kind of what we're looking at next. Um, we made the form. We are now distributing. Oh, no, we already distributed the form. We now did steps one through four. We already installed and did all this, launched the installer. Um, now we're going to go look at some of the things that it uh, brought up. All documents were successfully shared. Look at the Doctopus menu for some other options. Okay. So the ones that are in black columns right now are things that they're probably never going to see unless I explicitly share that with them. Um, these links are going to be, if I go back to my uh, test class, so there's my Doctopus assignment for testing, and here's the um, files that it created. Not sure why there's not three. Frank Bean, Bob Smith. Oh. It evidently took on the name of the first person in the group. That's interesting. Probably should have tested that ahead of time. Um, but here they are. And if I go to my Firefox one, and let's go to the inbox. Okay, so I am in the inbox of pgtech02 at gmail.com, which, if I remember right from my teacher side, is Frank Bean. Okay, so here I am as Frank Bean. I got an email from Garlic Suter, my teacher. You are now an editor on this. Hey guys, it's due Friday. Oh, thanks for the note, Teach. It even gives you a little preview there because Gmail is awesome. So let's go look at that. And now remember, I am Frank Bean. And I might tell my students, okay, here's your assignment. Maybe highlight these things as you complete them or whatever you're doing with it. I'm just going to highlight one thing so you can see what it looks like from the teacher perspective. That looks great. I just edited that, and I'm working, I'm working. Wonderful. So if I go back to the teacher side, 
and this last edited will not auto refresh. You will have to choose this drop down menu. Hey, my daughter's yelling for my wife. Um, refresh time of last edit, and after it calculates that, of course it's still got the time really close, but there that time's a few seconds later. It's within a few minutes, so you have to refresh that to see that. Um, one neat thing about this grade and written feedback, they won't see this unless you explicitly tell it to. So let's say that person got a 90, they got a uh, 88, and that person got a 76. They slacked. Uh, nice. Great. And great. And uh, plan ahead. Oops. Next time, please, Frank. Now, they won't see this until I go here and do Doctopus, um, send personalized emails. What that means is it's going to send this info to Bob, obviously the row 2 to Bob, row 3 to Jenny, row 4 to Frank, etc. So they don't see each other's. So I can send personalized emails to students. And this is kind of cool because um, we can use some of these other fields and kind of make kind of a, a Mad Libs type email with that. Uh, recipient email is in the field your Gmail address, so that's where it's going to go is there. Email subject, feedback on, and then the dollar sign link is referring to the link that goes to, I can't move this, but it's the link to their individual document. Dear, and instead of student, let's make it nice and personal, I'll say, dear, now let's say first name. Dear first name, your grade on the doc link is grade, so it's going to fill in those variables. Written feedback, which is what I typed in here, and I'll say you last you last edited your doc. Maybe I want to grab this one and make sure you get that exactly without the spaces and such. I think that makes a difference. You last edited your doc. Dollar sign last edited. Save and send emails. And now the Doctopus went ahead and sent all three emails. Lovely. Oh, I know. I just realized something. Duh. The only the reason there's only two is because I only have two groups: green and red. That's the entire green group and the entire red group. Sorry. I should probably realize that. Um, so now let's go look at Frank's side. Um, let's go back to my email. Hey, I got another thing from Garlic. Let's look it up. Dear Frank, I got that right. Your grade on it is 76. You last edited here. Plan ahead next time, Frank. Blah, blah, blah. So there you go. There's all that information direct to every member of the group. Um, and you don't have to differentiate or use the groups and such. Uh, one more note about groups. I tested this out earlier. This is different than that. That will create two different groups. And another thing to be careful of, now they're the same. However, if I accidentally hit the space bar right there, that is two different groups. They don't look like two different groups, but it is because that's red space, and this is just red, capital R. So I confirmed that earlier. Um, when I went through the script, it does think that is two separate things. Um, Oh, these little black arrow things in the corner kind of gives you little hints on what it's looking for. Um, let's go up here to step two. You can go back to these and change the values, of course. You'll notice here the groups are green, red, and red. Oh, that's odd. Uh, you can't highlight the space in here, but it did detect that as two separate groups. So proof it is sensitive to that. Uh, so that is a quick rundown of Doctopus and a few things that you can do with it. I hope you enjoyed, and uh, let me know if you uh, use this. And actually give credit to this guy, not me, I didn't make this, Andrew Stillman from upd.org slash Doctopus. Uh, this guy is apparently amazing. He's also a good speaker in person right here. Uh, so if you have any questions, there's a prob you'd probably get answered here quicker than I would answer it. But Anyways, good luck and see you later.